Here we go again. I swear this job's gonna kill me. 1 a.m. Good thing I love it. 3 a.m. the airport. Some light reading. I mean, we stay in a lot of places, but this is my very first log cabin. We wanted to start the lean program with a blaze. We thought <laughs> we'd give Brad and Lynn a warm welcome. <laughs> I'll get, I'll get the numbers posted. <laughs> well, it was bound to happen sooner or later. I was hoping for later, but we have finally arrived at a factory where after the initial walkthrough, I'm asking myself, how on earth can I help these people? I've never been to a plant so dialed in with a culture better than this one. The people, the processes, the product, everything is absolutely staggering. So this is not a lean for beginners trip. Um, you know, most, most companies are still chasing hours. These guys will be chasing minutes and seconds. So it looks like we're gonna have to work for it this week. I'll try and capture as much of it as I can. Uh, <laughs> here we go. Look at this lumber storage area. I mean, it is so neat, so tidy, so dialed. Everything's labeled. It is perfect. Not too noisy, but we talk about connecting processes um, and probably 95% of everywhere we initially go, most processes are actually disconnected. There's very few that are connected. Well, at this factory, every single one of them is connected. Let's have a quick look at the frame line. It goes from a rip saw to a planer, across a small buffer zone to a cutoff saw, down another conveyor, over to two cope and shape machines, off of those, onto the table, ready for assembly. Through the door clamp, around to the sander, over to Abachi, down another conveyor, into the sanding department, through a big giant heisman at the end, then over to the quality control, then down to shipping. It's a quick run through, and I don't know that I've seen a more textbook perfect uh, buffers between each station, uh, every process connected, no carts, parts are being staged in the right order, all the cut sheets are with them. It's phenomenal. I was super impressed with the first meeting, uh, class. It was super intriguing. I can't wait for tomorrow. We're doing our video. Oh, and I'm here. Yeah. Awesome. He has Thank to get into every oh. single cameo. Cameo. Today's training class. Yay! Yeah. Our objective this week um, was set for us by the owner of the company and he said he would like to see ideally a 27% increase in throughput. So much for sleeping. Well, it's another 4 a.m. can't sleep up studying notes. I've got all my time studies and when we lay out the factory, uh, mathematically speaking, we got a curveball. There is not one work center in the entire factory that cannot mathematically do what we're asking. The challenge then becomes, remember, if you uh, want to read some Goldratt stuff, there are no complex systems in reality. So if every station is capable, then we're doing something to make it fail. Um, and so now we got to figure out what that is. We got to go through and, and pretty much just spend time in Gemba and watch and look for that gremlin that is causing the problem. Um, so you're looking for things like questions, mistakes, uh, labor misallocation. Uh, the other thing that's critical that we establish right away in the factory is a control point. We want to be able to manage the whole factory by managing one point in the factory. So here I am in Gemba, literally doing a time study of every single station in the shop so I could fully understand all the nuances. After studying all my notes, after thinking about the factory nonstop for two days now, the, um, the solution, I believe, to speed up this factory is going to be in it to go in this morning and tell them all to slow down. I know, they're going to think I'm crazy too. So in a nutshell, here's my game plan. We've got about six feeding operations and six following operations. So we're going to establish the control point about right in the middle. And currently this control point is running something like 30 seconds a door. So it's going too fast. So I'm gonna slow down the control point by fixing the labor misallocation. We're gonna put that labor at another capacity constraint that I'm a little bit concerned about that it won't keep up if conditions aren't ideal. So we're gonna establish some labor there. Then we're gonna get another person floating and being a water spider, solving problems 
also followed by a little lesson on how to use our team leads. I don't know that the team leads are being used effectively. It's the best team I've ever seen in my life and everybody is, is onto it and wants the best thing. So I don't think experimenting with this team is gonna be a, a problem at all. And uh, I guess we'll see what happens. Stay tuned. Little side note, this, it's, it's like this place is from a different world. The shift doesn't start for 20 minutes. Look around. There is, and I say look around, where did they all go? There they all are. Look at all these people. Look at all these people. We asked if they have an overtime problem. They said, yeah, we're really struggling with people clocking in early and getting started on the day. So we got the whiteboard out. We laid out the plan and kind of told everybody about what we discovered the day before, how we wanted to establish a control point and that we were gonna have to slow down. We got a lot of doubtful looks, but in the end, the team was totally willing to give it a try. And what happened? Screens are green, baby. <laughs> the throughput is amazing. I didn't believe Brad, but he was right. I wish for 20%, it sounds like it's 38, but I need to go Gemba to actually see what's going on. So here we go. Is it, is it any easier or is it harder out there with the increase in throughput? So much easier. People standing around, Hard to believe. And all the parts are super sweet. Good. It's, it doesn't even make sense to like say it out loud. Good. Yeah. That's what we need. 480? 484. 484. We were having a hard time hitting 340 scrambling. And assembly slowed down and is producing more. Great. We need a win. Now the whole factory is keeping their eye on this conveyor right behind the fellow with the hat. That conveyor alone is our control point. Got our first standard coming out. Damn, beautiful. So here's a quick look at the panel building department. Uh, we didn't talk about that, but it goes around here through a planer sander, over here to sizing, down another conveyor, and ready for assembly. It's unbelievable how good these guys really are. So here's a look at the factory after we've established a control point. And I know it's hard to tell in this video, but you don't see anyone scrambling. You don't see anyone panicking. There's our control point. As long as that is being fed, there's no rush. And follow it after the control point. There's no buildup of parts. The sander's keeping up. The bocce's keeping up. Put Vern to work on some improvements. He loves it. Let's check on Lynn and her 5Sing team. This stuff could be 10 steps away, this stuff could be a couple steps away, and this all needs to be within reach. These guys are working at a, as a team right now. They're sort, they've done their set and order. Now they're gonna make all of the other stations exactly the same, the standard. Way to go, guys. Uh, we struggled having a place that didn't get in the way of prepping doors with epoxy on the table. Got Velcro. Orbitals never had a good spot to set either. They were always on the bench, always in the way. We drilled a hole, labeled a spot for it. We cut the lids off of our razor blade so there's no more struggle of trying to open it up, pull it out. There's Nick Essing. I love it. Go, Nick. Okay. So, before you guys came, I thought half of it was going to be BS. You were just going to kind of rock our world and make us slow and make us too corporate, uh, but after seeing it in place and seeing these changes and seeing the reality of it, that we can slow down, have easier jobs, better quality, and more throughput, I'm converted, fully converted. And here's Mike, the team lead, and he's doing exactly what team leads should be doing. They shouldn't be running around. They should be watching, being available. Here's a green screen, no problem. Here's a yellow screen, uh-oh. I need to do some attention, and there's a red screen hey, for better have a plan. Making a standard. Nice. I'm standing in the shop, and then she comes over and says, is there anything in my area that you saw that I could fix? What? This place is, this place is amazing. <laughs> I don't like the downtime. I like that I have to work all the time now. Okay, I'll never make anything up. You guys are great. I really super appreciate everything you've done. Totally got my brain working in overdrive, trying to figure out solutions to all kinds of situations. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, three, two, one. Wow, I don't even know where to start. 
Quantum Lean, you guys rock. Brad and Lynn, wow. Um, we're so thankful for what you guys did for us. Um, this whole week has been a transformation, honestly. Um, you know, we've got a great crew. I'm proud of our crew. And they've been soaking it in. Um, Lynn did a fantastic job in just doing the teaching and the training. Brad out on the floor showing us how stuff works, how to, how to see problems, how to watch um, flow, how to gauge your constraints and um, just make those the focus. It's been, been so incredible. And already we're seeing the benefits. Um, we, I see a team that's excited. I'm ignited with a passion for lean. And we're ready to go improve what we're doing. And we are going to build the best doors in the world. So uh, thank you guys again. We love you. Brad and Lynn, please come back. I know that's been a long video, but if you stick around for another couple of minutes, you're going to see the kind of culture that we're dealing with. Unbelievable. Hey. I'm Brian Fife from Panhandle Door. We just had some quantum leap training from Brad and Lynn, and they were talking about the culture of Panhandle Door. I had to share a story about what happened to me personally back in November. My off grid uh, house had a fire, chimney fire, it destroyed the whole house. But uh, tell you what a great culture this is before the fire trucks had even left my supervisor Nick was on the phone with me saying a prayer that I'd be watched over and everything would be okay that happened on a Sunday Monday morning when I came to work Aaron the plant manager came out an hour after the shift started with an envelope of cash and this is just from the office there'll be more coming if they put up signs on the break room door on the entry door five donations please take to the office they reserved a couple of shelves on the refrigerator for me for people that wanted to donate food then that first week we had stacks and stacks of donated clothes kitchen utensils all kinds of stuff that we'd lost in the fire just from the employees of Van Handledore. Van Handledore even set up an, an account where they would match any contribution that the employees gave towards my wife and I they would match it 100%. That's the type of culture that Panhandle Door has. I'm very grateful for it.